one more angle on. Okay, here's a shot of Larry Carlton sitting still in the racetrack and really takes a shot in the door. That's Lee Tisson, who runs into Caudill hard, and then there's Sherry Minter, young lady driver coming in. 0-4, scooting past is Jabe Jones. I believe we'll get one more car in here before this is over. Yellow car. Yep, here they come. I think that's Curtis Miller, number 10. Mike, even as we watch this, the, the, the start of this wreck happened a good bit before that. There was three cars that wrecked prior to that, and then this chain reaction happened. And uh, there's a look at the cleanup activities. We'll get a report from, uh, from out on the scene there just as quickly as we can. And we were remarking <laughs> as we went to break, T.G. Shepard, up here seems like a lot better place to be than down there. I think it's a little safer and it's a little cooler up here. Of course, it's uh, starting to cool off outside, but I, I wanted to come up. There's so much horsepower on the racetrack. I wanted to come up and visit with the manpower of calling the show up here in the booth. Well, there's no food here and there's no pretty girls, so, <laughs> but if you find some, come on back. I think Kyle Petty is over there where all the food is. <laughs> we'll check with you in a bit. Now let's go down to Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, living proof that Tim Bender did indeed get out of that thing okay. He's standing right here. Tim, we're going to be showing what happened out there, but uh, we're seeing it. You tell us what you felt. Well, we were going to, through turn three and four, and uh, everything was fine. Uh, Kurt Shelmerian and I were side by side, and uh, the 75 car ran into the back of me and uh, turned me sideways, and then I caught back the right rear corner of Kirk, and we both got uh, taken out. Damaged the car pretty bad. Looked like your car might have been a little tight, reason you couldn't make a better run at Robbie Thagard. Yeah, we were getting tighter as the night warmed, as the, the sun went down and the, the air got cooler. We were getting tighter, and it was uh, it was hard for me to keep up with Rob. He's got a good running car, but we were hoping to have a good top three finish for the Habit Steel Chevrolet, but it uh, didn't work out that way. Well, better luck next time. Guys, one thing he asked me when he came over, he said, who is driving that 75 car? He just wanted to know. Now let's go back and go on pit road to Randy Pemberton. Well, I'm standing by with Frank Rabin, the car owner of the car number 16, William Hopgood's car. First of all, William, we're taking a look at that wreck. Uh, what did he say? Well, he said uh, the cars, it was a few cars that got into it, and he had to go to the high side of the wall. He got into the side of the wall, and the car flipped him, so we got a pretty much tore up car right now. Is he okay? Yeah, he's doing real good. What does that do financially to a car owner when you have to come and tear up a race car like this? Well, we're low-key, low-operated, cheap-budget type racing, and uh, we come out to try to better ourselves in the race and learn a little bit more about the racing possibly one day get up a little bigger into the cup. Okay, that's it from down here. That last replay that we just saw was not the crash, Neil. That was the, the prelude to the crash, the prequel or whatever. Mike, that's what we're talking about. That's what really caught our attention is we just saw the action on the track, and it was about three car lengths in front of the, the major wreck. They were battling up toward the front of the pack when, uh, when this was triggered, and it was the reaction of drivers behind that happened. They're coming out of the corner. And this is way up near the front of the pack. This is about three or four cars in front of the wreck. Okay, the car bounced off the wall. They got together. Watch this 15 car. He, believe it or not, he corrects this race car. He gets back in line, but the chain reaction started behind him. That initial movement caused the other people to lift behind him. And you can see behind it just turmoil. The car's going, and here's what's left, an instant junkyard. Cars being hauled back to the garage area. We see 46 being dragged in. Bubba Urban out of Richmond, Virginia as cleanup continues 61 of 67 laps complete the winston open our in-car commentator coming up next we are back i am sitting here in the what i guess you call the cheap seats up here in the grandstand live from charlotte motor speedway actually in the aisle and we were waiting for the exciting conclusion of the sportsman race mike joy has all the details of uh, just went down well katie i'm trying to figure out which wrecker is leading at this point they've got about five of them hauling these cars in after a tumultuous pileup on the back straightaway. Looks like about seven cars being hauled in on the hook in one form or another or flatbedded back to the Sportsman Garage area. These drivers still have a couple of races here to run this week, and hopefully they'll have enough for full fields. A lot of work to do. For example, on that car, one of the standouts of last night's qualifying race, Curtis Miller. There's the remains of the 16 car, William Hopgood. We heard from his car owner a minute ago. There's the 99 of Lee Tisson one of the more experienced drivers in this sportsman field being yanked in. Sherry Miller had engine problems at the start of the race and went back out, sadly, with this result. And there are still two cars yet to be hauled in. One is on the record. They're coming out of turn number four. And that's the 16 car of uh, Hopgood. And Larry Cottle's car remains on the backstretch. They're hooking up to it now. Uh, the remains of 
Caudill's car. Pace cars still bring the field around here at fairly slow speed. Under normal conditions, or should this be the feature race, they would likely red flag this and restart it. Trying to stay on schedule. They're continuing to circulate under the yellow, and we've got four laps to go. Neil? Mike, if there's, if there's any one good thing that you see about this was where the lick was right in the driver's door. Here we go. Here's the car up in the wall. There's Larry Caudill losing control. Got up against the wall. And then he comes back down. There's nothing he could do. He clipped that car, turned him right back out into the outside wall. And then behind him, the guys, there's nowhere to go. If you look right now, the track's plugged. And it's a deal where they start bouncing off of each other. There's a couple of cars out of the camera on the right side. They're in a little bit of a problem. They're all the way down on the apron. But the hard part is right here. Here he sits, right in the middle of the racetrack, not even moving. But he's plugged the racetrack up. And here comes a car in that's going to really nail him right in the left side. But as we looked at the car going back on the record, the thing that might be to his advantage was it hit in that left front wheel, not in the door. And that suspension area collapsed. It absorbed some of the energy. And even after this, here comes another car in going to uh, pile into him again. So uh, took three real hard licks. We'll point out that not all of these drivers have spotters up on top of the speedway in radio contact with their drivers. And that most of these drivers in this race do not have a tremendous amount of super speedway experience. And you do see the number 96 up on the roof, up on the sail panel there. And that was in memory of the driver we lost last evening in the qualifying event. Here, many of the cars are carrying that symbol up on the roof in this race today. <laughs> Overlooking, uh, casting a little shade on the backstretch grandstand. A lot of inflatables here at the Speedway, representing various causes and sponsors. 65 will come up on the board this time, and unless they give them one to go, this event may end under the caution flag. 64 make that excuse me three laps to go so if they get cleaned up there is a possibility of a green checker like they're working real hard on the back straightaway blowing the uh all the oil dry off and uh, if they can get that cleaned up they'll they'll go with it and it'll be a one lap shootout more short track than super speedway skills will come into play there i promise you the guys that are in the garage area waiting on the winston to start the winston open to start they want them to go some green trip flag racing. With that stuff on the track, they'd like to see these guys run a few laps and make sure they clean that area off for them before they start the Winston Open. So Robbie Faggard, who has led every lap from the pole. As you see now, the effect of the lighting system beginning to play on these cars. As we get a little towards sundown, Dennis sets are running down on the bottom of the racetrack. And they're still going to blow a little bit more of that speedy dry off here. And see if we can get a one to go this time. Following this, the Winston Open, where some of NASCAR's top drivers will attempt to qualify for the All-Star Race, the Winston, coming up tonight here on NASCAR's country home, the Nashville Network. Boy, it took a, excuse me, Mike took a lot of oil dry back there, and that's what's really delaying this, uh, getting this thing where they can restart the race. Safety car, bring them through there one more time. And we'll look for an indication from the starter stand. Pace speed has been slowed a bit. If they can clean it up, we may have a shot to get back under green here. That's what they're trying to do right now. If they can get enough of that speedy drive down and off the track. The man who has led this entire race, Robbie Faggard, and used all of his strategy and skill to do so, will have a one-lap shootout against Dennis Setzer and the rest of this field. Now, interesting, Neil. Faggard has been running every one of these caution laps up on the banking. Setzer's been down on the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, it might be just trying to stay out of some of that trash up there. There's so much stuff on the racetrack. I'm trying to avoid having a flat tire just riding around. Well, the one to go sign is on from the flag stand, but the caution flag is not been withdrawn. There's the top five after 65 laps. Mike, they look like they might possibly going to let it turn them loose with one to go. Yep. And let them make a one lap sprint because he indicated one lap. It wasn't the white flag. He was indicating one lap before green. So if they can get those uh, that equipment off the back straightaway, they might turn them loose for one single lap. Well, to do that, Neil, the light would have to go off on the safety car in the back straightaway. Yep. I don't know if they do that. There are two laps left. 65 laps are complete. White flag next time by. Sweepers working pretty frantically back there, but this race, which started out so promising and had a couple of big bangs, looks like it may end with a whimper here. And in the garage area, 
in the garage area. The Winston Open cars are getting ready to roll. And there is Buddy Baker, who would normally be sitting up here with us. Right now, he's sitting down there waiting to go racing and tell us all about it. He and the Winston Open carrying a racing's first ever in-car microphone under green. Now, a lot of the TV networks have talked to drivers under the caution flag. Buddy Baker, who won the Winston Open in 1987. Back when uh, Barney Hall and I anchored the NASCAR radio network, MRN, a Tim Richmond once started on the pole in a race and wanted to call the first two laps under green. And uh, we were not able to get clearance from NASCAR to do that. But since then, the technology has changed a bit. And since this is a non-points race, folks felt the experiment was worth a try. And Buddy is more than happy to, to give it a shot. So one lap to go. And this must be very frustrating for Dennis Setzer. He's had a good car. He has raced his way up, started third, dropped back a bit, climbed his way up through the top five to second spot. And there is Dennis kind of idling along in that Ford, and the only thing that separates him from victory lane is the pace car and Robbie Faggart, who's done a great job from the pole to hold all challengers at bay. First Tim Bender, and then Dennis Setzer. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to end under the caution. There was just no way they could get the, the track cleared off. They've got the Winston Open coming after this, and they're going to have to work on the track before we can even go with that. So in the 100-mile record book, Robert Huffman with three wins will be joined at the top of that list by Robbie Faggard, who will pick up his third victory. Dennis Setzer, who in the past has started here on the pole, will pick up his third runner-up finish. So a very familiar song to the end of this one as they come off turn four behind the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme pace car, and they'll come down to the checkered flag. And it'll be Robbie Faggard, Dennis Setzer, Freddie Query, Mark Cox, and Peter Gibbons, the front five. checkered flag and a climactic ending to a race that certainly had its exciting moments and that big six car pile up on the back straightaway puts a finale to the Winston Sportsman 100 for this evening we'll be back to meet the winner and begin the free race from the Winston Open and the Winston right after we pause for these messages The Winston Open is next year at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The top two drivers finishing this event will transfer into NASCAR's all-star race. We've just concluded the Winston 100 for the Igloo Sportsman Challenge. Robbie Faggart goes to victory lane over Dennis Setzer, a familiar one-two finish here at Charlotte. Their tracker Freddie Query is third. Mark Cox carried our in-car camera to fourth spot. And Canadian Peter Gibbons earned a fine fifth. Pope, Ward, Keller, Trenum, and Dawkins. We're the top ten, and Neil, it's kind of a shame that a, a division that's shown us such real good racing should have to end this race under caution after a big pileup on the back stretch. Mike, I kind of hate to see that. I know the fans would like to see the thing go green. You know, it is a good series, and we see the real good competition. It'd be nice to finish it on the green. Well, let's go to victory lane where it's finished. Glenn Jarrett. Well, Robbie Faggart, uh, you proved to be a man of your word. You told us at the top of the show you were going to try to lead every lap, take that third victory here at Charlotte Speedway, and you did it. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to be here. I'd like to thank Igloo for sponsoring the, the Sportsman Series. Uh, it's a hard day. It's nothing easy. These cars are very equal. We just have to put it out front and hope nobody can get around us. Well, it didn't look like you had too much trouble. The car seemed to work flawlessly the, during the whole race. Yeah, thank you. It did. Uh, I'd like to thank our team manager, Tommy Johnson, our crew chief, Mike Armstrong. They've really done a great job on the car. Uh, I'd like to thank Roberts Racing Engines. Uh, everybody worked real well today. Did you ever at any point think that uh, anybody was going to be able to make a good run at you? It looks like that... Uh, you were pretty content to uh, to let them shoot at you all they could. I thought Tim Bender there was really saving some. I thought he was just falling in behind me to save something for later. But as it turned out, I believe we could work a little better in three and four than he could as the race went on. Well, we got two more of these races coming up this week, and uh, wouldn't surprise me to see this guy back here again, Mike. Well, he knows his way to victory lane, Glenn. <laughs> Certainly, he has been there before. We're awaiting word on the uh, condition of the drivers involved in that incident on the back straightaway, and uh, we'll update you just as soon as we have word from NASCAR. Uh, on their on their condition uh, we are told and we see that one driver is being transferred to the hospital for treatment uh, but we'll have to wait to get an update from NASCAR as to who that is in the meantime let's go up to a unique spot in all of motor racing Charlotte Motor Speedway's Speedway Club T.G. Shepard 
Let's see, who was it here that had the uh, Blackberry uh, uh, and the key lime here? <laughs> Gainfully well, employed. <laughs> well, as you can see, Mike and Neil, uh, this, uh, you couldn't make a trip to Charlotte Motor Speedway without coming to the Speedway Club and see the other.